Hello, thanks for joining us today as we take you around the world of ICT development. If this is your first time being with us, be sure your time with us will be well spent. I am Iwo Mazino Wanda, welcoming you to this special edition of the program, NIDA Impact, brought to you by the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA. The world is undergoing a digital revolution with significant implications for global economies and livelihoods. This revolution is predicated on the ever-increasing pace of technological innovation and diffusion. Digital technologies and their attendant applications are reshaping whole domains of human activities and are spreading across the world faster than previous waves of technological innovation. This necessary change is part of what COVID-19 has brought upon nations, individuals and organizations. In Nigeria, the premier IT regulator NIDA is not failing to impress by leading the change and creating the needed environment to mitigate the pandemic and position the nation for growth. In this edition, we present to you a special report on economic development stimulating growth using the startup ecosystem. The reality of the coronavirus on economies means they have to re-strategize on survival and recovery. Plus, a startup lounge featuring myclinic.ng. Not forgetting our personality of the week, Mr. Isaac Yinka Adejube, Director, Standards, guidelines and frameworks. Stay with us, but first, the news. The reality of the coronavirus on economies means they have to re-strategize on survival and recovery. Thus, Kano and Jigawa states are already looking inwards on the post-pandemic strategies. Kashifu Inua Abdullahi Diji Nitta joins other functionaries to give insight on how to get governance and development back on course. And we are pioneering an e-learning platform to support public schools in both Kano and Jadao states in conjunction with the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF. In the past few years, this concerned education of selected open and treasury institutions to periodically give out support, food and truth for the less privileged. As we know, Nigeria is facing um, quite huge challenges uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, what started as a health crisis has now imploded into what is fast emerging as an economic and uh, fiscal crisis. And the situation in our country is particularly complicated by, uh, by a, a health system that's very weak, um, low literacy levels, uh, poverty, um, and lack of um, the issue of public trust. Because the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA, has called the attention of the general public to the existence of fake websites in circulation, trying to capitalize on the COVID-19 pandemic to defraud unsuspecting Nigerians. The agency says it will not relent in its effort at ensuring a safe and secure Nigerian cyberspace. According to NIDA in a statement signed by its head, Corporate Affairs and External Relations, Hajia Hadiza Humar. The agency's Computer Emergency Readiness and Response Team, CERT, identified a number of websites using various phishing tricks to attack internet users. One of such tricks is misinforming the public that the federal government has approved the disbursement of funds under a fictitious vote called Lockdown Funds. It then requires the user to complete an online form with their personal information, including bank details, for the payment to be effected. Furthermore, in NIDA's efforts to checkmate cybersecurity threats and possible data breach under the Nigerian Data Protection Regulation, NDPR, Internet users are advised to observe the following. Not to give out their personal information to anyone online. Avoid clicking on known links and disregard offers requesting for their bank details. 
The agency calls on Nigerians to intensify their efforts in supporting the federal government in its fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome to NIDA. Welcome to Nigeria's IT regulator. Our plan is to make sure we create millions of digital jobs for Nigerians. From innovation to business enhancement using IT, IT local content, e-governance, cyber security and data protection, NIDA is your dependable partner. We have achieved a lot within this time. We commissioned the first innovation and incubation hub in this country. We are building these hubs across the country. At NIDA, we take the mission to building a digital Nigeria very seriously. Join us. For more on the program, please log on to www.nita.gov.ng. You can also email us at info at nita.gov.ng. Or better still, check us out on all of our social media platforms. To facilitate growth and development in the digital economy, all sectors of the economy have been encouraged to imbibe digital skills and technology. The global startup economy is worth nearly three trillion dollars. Special report of economic development stimulating growth using the startup ecosystem. This is our insight this week. Technology-driven startups aren't just contributing to economic growth. In many ways, they are economic growth. The Global Startup Ecosystem Report, GSER, explores how startups are revitalizing traditional industry sectors through the application of technology. In Nigeria, the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA, has been leading the charge to help the nation's quest for new disruptive ideas, solutions, and services. The idea of building IT hubs and innovation and incubation hubs is to strengthen our ecosystem. If you remember from inception, this government of President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, has been talking about economic diversification. So we look at it, Nigeria, we have very high level of entrepreneurial skills because based on the GEM, Global Entrepreneurship Monitor Report, Nigeria is leading the world in terms of ability to start and grow business in entrepreneurship. More than 90% of Nigerian adults think they have uh, entrepreneurship skills or they believe they can start business on their own. So we are trying to harness this capability to make Nigeria a startup so that people can create jobs for themselves. From health to finance, education to security, agriculture to transportation, Nigerian youths have shown their ingenuity to create world-class solutions and businesses. In order for us to make sure that startups, that's the technology entrepreneurs, have an enabling environment and we also create a sustainable ecosystem, um, the approach we took um, is to start up uh, a, a policy recommendation document. It's called the National ICT Innovation and Entrepreneurship um, Vision. It, um, it gives recommendations based on the main components of a technology ecosystem, that's infrastructure, funding, um, culture, research and development, and all the other ingredients that make a thriving um, technology ecosystem. So based on this um, event that we have, we conduct policy hackathons, we send out questionnaires asking them how we can make their businesses better. And as a result of that, we got responses saying that how we can make it better is to give them, make sure they have access to market, to make sure that they have access to internet, is to make sure that they have pioneer status where tax is being reduced. They don't have to pay the tax um, at the early stage of their businesses. They have tax reliefs and things like that. NIDA has provided different platforms to help incubate, mentor and facilitate fundings and best business practices for the startups. NIDA has supported us extensively uh, through exposure to trainings, uh, through 
through events and a lot of other things. So Nita has been doing this for a long time and we are one of the startups that I would say uh, benefited immensely from really had a lot of support in business development not just business development of knowing what is a do's and don'ts in business but also the, the structure roadmap of how to build a successful um startup um, in, in the 21st century and, and and this includes the do's and the don'ts this includes strategies this includes different forms of of, of innovation that must be embedded into a business in the 21st century for it to be able to ask success Lida has been helpful to us as a business and in fact individuals um, trying to start up a business and um, they've exposed us to investors, they've, they've exposed us to um, a network of other budding entrepreneurs like us who are um, solving um, solutions, so, uh, solving problems in the African space. This is a great opportunity. I, I think people with a lot of ideas will be encouraged to put out what they think is a solution to um, like the problems we have in this country and uh, to our developmental problem to some extent in terms of in the ICT sector and um, uh, I will say kudos to them and uh, I think they should like you know extend it to other sectors because there are so many sectors that need um, an intervention like this uh, in Nigeria Given the vibrancy the Nigerian startup sector is now witnessing under the coordination of NIDA, many youths are now creating employment and making entrepreneurship a delight. This is NIDA Impact, Nigeria's leading IT program on television. For more information on how you can participate, please reach us via the details on the screen. At this point, it's time for our startup lounge. Featuring this week is myclinic.ng. The solution is on the health sector. It is a healthcare technology company built on the conviction that healthcare services should be affordable and available. For more, here is our startup this week. Share with us in full details what myclinic.ng is really all about. My name is Aliyu, Bello Aliyu. Uh, I am the founder and uh, the current CEO of MyClinic.ng. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so basically, MyClinic.ng is an online platform where users get to uh, hold uh, online video consultations with qualified medical doctors. So, uh, our users are able to talk to a doctor uh, using mobile applications available on iOS and Android. And for those who do not have smartphones, we have created a uh, toll-free numbers where they can just go ahead and dial a special number and they can go ahead and talk to a doctor. So that means on the myclinic.ng platform you get to talk to a doctor regardless of whether you have a smartphone or not or even if you have a smartphone regardless of whether you have data or not. So at any time, anywhere, basically that's what we do. Nita has put together quite a number of seminars, startup clinics and uh, trainings for uh, tech startups and also some entrepreneurs and can you share with us which one of these activities you've participated in and how has it affected your projection for myclinic.ng? The first uh, personal experience or engagement I had with Nita was in the former startup I had. Uh, it was an online student accommodation solution but we largely built it with the same team that we're working on this it was largely the same team uh, we were selected uh, by NITA to we were sponsored at the, to JITEX 2018 in, in the which held in, in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates and that was my real first engagement with NITA itself so that really gave us necessary exposure to the um, international investment climate to uh, how things are done internationally and everything. So that's the very first engagement we had with Nita. So after that particular startup, uh, the team came around, came to Jalad and we started working on this particular product. And as usual, Nita still came to our own aid. Uh, we participated in numerous uh, Nita engagements from most recently the Nita Startup Clinics that some of our, uh, our representatives attended and, I, and it showed in, in, in their conduct immediately after they finished that to uh, perhaps the one that was held in 2019, which is the NITDA 2019 eHealth Hackathon, which was the very first uh, challenge that this team won specifically. Uh, we emerged as the most innovative eHealth startup in Nigeria in 2019, specifically. And it was this same product that we demoed, uh, which held the eHealth Hackathon held in, 
think it was the Nile University in 2019. Then most recently, uh, the engagement we had was in the uh, 2020 uh, COVID Hack Challenge uh, that was organized with the help of the uh, Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. Uh, this our startup came a uh, second runner up, third position. Uh, so, and all these engagements have had the uh, cumulative effect of uh, uh, giving us necessary exposure, so to say. People tend to know the product, they tend to know what we're doing, and immediately after this uh, engagements and the press that they bring and the hype that they bring, we tend to see the numbers show in our downloads on the App Store as well as in our subscriber numbers. So that helped a lot. So overall, I'd say Nibda has given us two important things. One is exposure, two is uh, the networking effect. How has it affected you personally as an individual? and as an entrepreneur in operating my clinic with NG. This is not a very fertile place for startups, to be honest. Uh, you do not even meet people that are into tech a lot in those particular regions. Yeah. Uh, so, but the fact that we started this thing one way or the other, we had the courage to start, and one way or the other, Nita was able to notice us and sort of like bring us to the limelight, has a way of encouraging you personally. It means uh, no matter how remote if your, your, your location is, no matter how uh, unexposed you are at the start, yeah. that gives you sort of like the opportunity to work on your ideas and gives you access to the right people and the right resources to develop properly develop these ideas into viable products going ahead. So on a personal level, I think Nida has really encouraged me to be honest. It has encouraged me to understand that I understand right now that uh, regardless of where you are or where you come from, you can actually build a sustainable tech company and build a, an amazing tech product where people can use. And I think that's one of the major mandates of NISDA, uh, encouraging people like me who would not be in tech initially to actually work on these things. Thank you so much for your time. From that innovative tech healthcare product, we take you now to our personality of the week often referred to as a jolly good fellow because of his humility rooted in knowledge and capacity. Mr. Isaac Adejube is the Director of Standards, Guidelines and Frameworks at NIDA. In this edition, he speaks on his department's role and the overall mission of NIDA. Ladies and gentlemen, we we'll present to you Mr. Isaac Adejube, Director at NIDA. Standard Gala and Framework is one of the departments in NIDA that is saddled with the responsibility of initiating, reviewing, and developing standard guidelines and frameworks, which are the tools that we use for IT regulation. We all know the importance of software testing. Let me give you an example. Uh, prior to this interview, I was trying to transfer money from my banking application. As I log in, I found out that the application had been changed. And there are a lot of things that I could not do on this new application. I was wondering, immediately I started going to the review on this app, and I found out that so many people are complaining about the new application that it was not properly tested. So the essence of the Nigerian software testing guideline is actually to mitigate software vulnerability risk in our software development. We do this in collaboration with the stakeholders. We are currently uh, finalizing it for presentation to the stakeholder. As you are aware, NIDA is statutory mandated by NIDA Act of 2007 to develop, regulate all the areas of electronic governance and also to monitor the use of electronic data interchange another form of electronic communications in the country. Uh, some of the objectives of the NDPR 
the Nigerian Data Protection Guideline, which is in line with the GDPR, is to safeguard the right of natural persons to data privacy and to prevent manipulation of personal data. Therefore, media as a custodian of this regulation is how to ensure that anyone who is entrusted with or is in possession of personal data of a data subject was a duty to take care of the data subject and also be held responsible and accountable for his acts and omissions in respect of data processing and in accordance with the principles of the regulation. We want to ensure that those who are holding Nigerian data and even foreign, uh, foreigners' data, they are holding it in such a way that they will use it within the specifics. They must take consent from the owner for usage, especially if it's outside what they are keeping it for. So the Nigerian Data Protection Guidelines is aimed at ensuring that the data of Nigerians are properly kept and are used for the purpose for which it is being held. We are currently reviewing the government website standards, which have been developed for some time, to ensure that we bring in all the necessary uh, important things that uh, need to be considered when developing government website. A government website should be very, very clear as to what the agency is doing. Number one, all government websites need to have the same feel so that if anybody is perusing government website, you will know that this is the standard of government website. And we have seen cases whereby Froster are cloned a government website to do fraudulent activities. So all the necessary guidelines have been put in the document so that agencies will be aware and follow the guideline to make sure that their website is developed in such a way that it is safe, easy to access, and also equally updated at appropriate time. It's not just having a website where uh, dormant information are populated on the website. So all these things have been put into the guidelines, and I'm sure my colleagues at MJ, they will find it quite uh, useful. A big thank you to Mr. Isaac Adejube, Director of Standards, Guidelines and Frameworks at NIDA there. Take responsibility against the spread of coronavirus, COVID-19. Adopt preventive measures and stay at home. Explore digital solutions to work and connect with colleagues, family and friends. In case of emergency, call National Emergency Toll-Free Line 112 or NCDC. 0809-700-0010. This message is a corporate social responsibility from NICDA. Until next week, on behalf of the DG, management and staff of NICDA, I say keep innovating, stay tech savvy, and see you in our next edition. I am Iwoma Zinu Wanda. Bye for now.